Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Mr. Avishek Ranjan and invite him to this leadership lecture series, as well as the students present here. Uh, I'm Professor G. Samantha. Uh, my delight. And I'm not being I'm not visible. Okay, now I'm visible, right? Okay. So I'm very happy, delighted, as well as excited uh, to introduce <coughs> Mr. Avishek Ranjan on this leadership lecture series. Uh, Mr. Avishek Ranjan uh, is today's esteemed speaker to our leadership lecture series. And he is the currently data and global head of sustainability at Brillo. I'm also delighted to share that Mr. Ranjan has built the sustainability practice along with the award winning CSR program at Brillo, which is called Brillo Bringing Smiles, which is aimed at helping 1 lakh plus underserved children. He is leading carbon neutral program alumni employee care and outreach at Brillo. Mr. Abhishek Ranjan is an alumnus of IMT Gajiaba, where he also co-founded its social club, MADF. <clears throat> he started his career with IBM and later worked for Oracle FSSL, where he was credited for setting up customer care centers and industry relation function in India. He has more than one hat multiple hats on our on his head he is not only working in corporates he is also working as an adjunct faculty at this university and teaches sustainability and csr at imt gaziabad nalanda university and kashi university he is also a member of board of studies at tumkur university and abhishek ranjan is the head of the ashokams south india sustainability and csr forum and does pro bono volunteering with rotary and several social and non-profit organizations. This is a very brief introduction about our speaker. If we start speaking about him, it will take more time. So I'm also excited to listen to him. Uh, and let's uh, transfer the control to Mr. Ranjan. Mr. Ranjan? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for warm welcome and introduction. Um, I think one thing we uh, probably is not part of the introduction is that I also hails from Patna. So Patna is my hometown. I studied in St. Michael's uh, in my early days schooling. Uh, till my graduation, I was in Patna and then I moved to Delhi and finally to Bangalore. So great to be virtually connected uh, to my hometown and to meet all of you in Patna. And Dr. Rana has been a dear friend, a senior fraternity in our fraternity. And thanks to him as well for inviting me. Um, hope I'm audible, right? My, my voice is clear. Yes, you are. Great. So the topic I have chosen today is not a CSR or a sustainability topic. I have chosen a topic which I have just delivered this lecture at Simbrosis Institute of Management in Pune. Uh, last week, last month, on the topic of campus to corporate. You all in a campus, a beautiful campus today, and very soon you'll be, you know, moving to a corporate life. And the picture also, did, you know, kind of represent the same. Of course, um, this is not an inclusive picture, but just to kind of represent how the transitions happen from a campus to corporate. I would also like you to uh, ask questions as much you can. In between, I'm, I will be more than glad to make it more interactive. Now, you know, all of you who have been in the first year or second year of your MBA or a PGDBM program, and um, from assignments to submit semesters, um, you know, your exams, your, you know, all those kind of assessments happens. We'll move to a teamwork and deadlines. 
Right? So when you move to a corporate, where you are more concerned in the in the in the campus about assignments and mid semester, it will now move to a teamwork where you have to part of a team, making sure that your team performs, you perform as a part of the team, and you meet all the deadlines, right? So you know whatever timeline deadline defined. So that's a life changes once you move to that, right? And we all know that, I mean, it's a beautiful picture, again, representing how growth, how production, how, you know, the mother earth or the nature has its own creativity in terms of different life, life cycles, right? And transition is an ongoing process, right? In, in so far in your life would have transited many times from primary school, from a nursery to primary, primary to secondary, high, then college and postgraduate and henceforth. So I think we are all are very equipped and ready for the transition in our life. And since it's a transition process, I think it's, it's very important that you are getting ready today. You know where the life would be after a year or two. And it's very important to understand that so that you start practicing you will start, you know, realizing that how the life is going to be. So thinking ahead of the times is also will give you ready for it. Now, many of you will be in this room will be fresher, probably, or some of you will have little experience and then you'll join PGDBM program. Now, what is your aspirations would be? And uh, fresh as a fresher, right? So if I have to kind of list, right, you must be thinking a brand like, you know, I should work in, you know, Google, Facebooks, you know, uh, you know, some big companies like TCS, right, Infosys, um, you know, different, different sectors, a big bank. So there'll be, all of you in this room will have an aspiration of a brand. Then the package and the work culture, right? I don't know how many of you would have thought about this work culture, but Definitely brand and package would have been your first thought, right? That's how your aspirations is. But is it the aspiration the corporates have from you or how it is? It's different, right? And if you look at all of this brand package work culture, it's also aligned to your future career aspiration in terms of where do you want to grow? what you want to achieve in the next five years, three years, long-term, short-term, right? But these are your aspirations. All of you in this room will agree that these are your aspirations, right? Does anybody in this room say, you know, I have a different aspiration? Anyone? Okay. So I believe that everybody has this aspiration, right? Now let's talk about the, okay, you have an aspiration. You want to be in a big company, big brand, fat salary. You need to have a good work culture where you have a work-life balance, you know, then you, which company will give you good training and learning and development. So your future growth is also there. All of this is your aspiration. But what is this aspirations? comes in between your aspiration and what the expectation of a corporate, what comes in between? Let's talk about that. Job fit, organization's culture, are you job ready? If you, your company is going to hire you, are you ready for them? Will you fit in that organization's culture? Have you understood about those organization culture? Location, some of you would be more interested to work in North India versus South India or different cities. Corporate life itself is, you know, for you will be very new. Team differences, how you will work in different mindset of people, different team. You have this very comfortable problem so far. We're not being challenged enough. Superior expectation, your manager, your supervisors. Peer pressure. Right? May often we compare that, oh, this X guy is doing well than me, and that guy got 12 lakhs, I got 5 lakhs. Those kind of 
always comparison. You know, he has bought a house or the new car or new bike. A lot of shit. He is getting more, uh, you know, pampered by the manager than me. All of this, right? And finally, long working hours. I thought, okay, after nine o'clock, I will go to office. Six o'clock, I'll come, and probably eight o'clock, I'll go for a late night movie show. But I think, will it happen all the time? No guarantee. So, as all of you in this room, all especially the students, these are the eight challenges you always have to struggle with. So, what we'll do with this? We will live with it and say, Cholo will think when we join the company, or will you start thinking about it now? In my mind, the answer is now. Right? Getting yourself ready, prepared for all of this so that you thrive, you know, in the corporate life. So we have talked about the your expectation, salary, brand, the future career development, culture. But have you thought what is the company's expectation? What are they looking from you? Right? And your expectation, company expectation is nowhere matching, right? Company is not saying that, you know, I should pay high or less to your salary wise, right? What are they looking in you? The first thing is commitment. Why commitment? Because when you join the organization, you will be all very raw. You will be trained, you will be, you know, put into a lot of guidance, supervision, mentorship, so that you start become a you know productive employee. You're not going to be a productive from day one. If some company is investing so much in you and there's no commitment, after six months or a year you leave, that is a bad hiring. The values, the value system which you bring on the table, is it aligned to company's values? See, I can have a different value but in my company, which I work for, have a different set of values. How much you align to those values? Just to give an example, what are the four values Brilio has? The first is customer success. Anything and everything will do for a customer to succeed in this marketplace. The second is we care. We will care for our colleagues, employees, our society and our environment. Third, entrepreneurial. Whichever program you, or your project, you are a part of it, which is a function, you have to have someone who's a risk taker. You have to have someone who is self-starter, self-motivator. You have to have someone who is willing to, you know, experiment new ideas, innovate. That's an entrepreneurial skill is what is with our values. And the fourth is, Operational excellence. Whatever you do, you should be excellent in that, in your education. Many times you would have heard this statement that, you know, you have, you have heard about this, uh, you know, the beauty lies in beholder's eye, right? This is a very common phrase. But I would say that in any management principle, the beauty lies in the execution. How well you do the execution, is the paramount for the success for any of, any of the initiative, right? So the success of execution. So these are the four values. So these values are aligned to your values. Are you willing to make some changes and to align to the value? This is what company will look for you. Attitude and confidence. Right attitude and right confidence. Not overconfidence, not underconfidence. Your knowledge and expertise in the area. Your people and interpersonal skills. How do you meet with people? How do you communicate? What's your language? What's your body language? What kind of, you know, um, you know, dressing sense you have? How do you present yourself? All of this will matter in there. And the last is the passion and pride. How much passion you bring? How much energy you bring? How much pride you have for working in this space? You have to demonstrate it. As we say that, no, until unless you value yourself, nobody else will value yourself. 
value. So that's how this company is. So is your expectation and company expectation, are they have any synergy? You have to think about it. Each one of you in the room should really ponder on this slide and see that, hey, I am, I am committed. I am doing, I am, I am committed. I, am, I believe in the values. I have a right confidence and attitude. I also equip with the good knowledge and expertise in the area where I'm working. I have, I know how to deal with you know, internal stakeholder with employees and people. And I doing this, I show passion and pride in working in this organization. Right? Stop me if you have any questions, you know. So we talked about challenges for individuals, for you guys, the freshers. Now let's talk about corporate. Job fit, again, it's a big, big problem for freshers, not for us, for companies also. Retention. How do we retain employees for a longer period? Right? So we talk about employees' life value in the company, like how much the, the life they spend in the company, whether it's two years, five years, seven years. That's how you measure your attention. Monetary satisfaction. Can we really satisfy employee salary? If you give X, you know, will they satisfy X plus 10%, X plus 30%, 50%, where is the satisfaction? It's a big challenge. Unrealistic expectation from job. Somebody told you, oh, this company sent everybody to on-site to America. And you came, join, and oh, I will go to a US. I will get a visa second day of joining. Those are unrealistic expectations. Many times people spend more than what they earn, thinking that, you know, this hyperbole cycle, I will get this much percent high. And then there's a problem in, in personal and professional life. Many times also the people will say that, oh, today my job is not good. I'm not enjoying it. It's the same mundane work every day, same thing I have to do. How do you make your job interesting? How do we keep employees happy that is interesting? It's a big challenge. And the rated is engaging employees. How do we engage employees? Not just work, but how do you make them brand, a custodian, brand, you know, um, spokespersons or you know people who really talks about great about this company think about challenge for corporate vis-a-vis -vis challenge for you then you'll understand where are the 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 common ground and where are the some of the you know frictions I in my mind there are few areas where a fashion uh, a newbie, new, um, you know, MBA highs who join should focus on few things. Really be strategic, right? Confidence in your ability to perform the job. Need to have the right confidence, equipped with the right knowledge. Right? And do everything to perform good in your job. Learning about culture is very important about your company. Every time where a hiring happens, appraisal happens, there would be a component of your culture element in the whole thing. That's very, very critical. Establish a relationship, interpersonal skills. Right? How do you maintain that? That's very important. How you want to get the teamwork done? Having a mentor, find a mentor who can mentor you in your, uh, on your professional success, on your personal success. Mentor who can you reach out at 3 a.m. in the morning, should be accessible to guide you. But you also need to show the mentor that you care and you have enough support and enough, uh, you know, um, 
um, you know, acknowledgement for it. So having a mentor is very, very important. Discipline. Many of us think that, okay, 3.45 was the today's session. Some of you might have turned up after that, right? Having a discipline for others, respect for others, timely coming. Coming on time is a, it's the most important thing and the most frustrating for people who, who likes to come on time, but then to wait for others. You may be the best employee, you may be the best and best human being, but if your manager is expected to come on time and you don't show up, he or she will be very upset about it. And I said that strategy versus execution. In a room, if you are, give a problem, there are 20 people who give strategy, I say grow, I say grow. But the beauty lies on execution. Many times we try to kind of say that, um, you know, we'll do this, I will do that. My philosophy has been that always under promise, and over deliver. Quote it. Under promise, over deliver. That has been always working. What we do, we do over promise and under deliver. Because your over promise will make your manager superior to make same set of promises to his or her so bosses. So please do not do that. Refrain from what you can't deliver, you can't, you know, probably do it. How many of you spend 20, 30 minutes on learning every day a new thing? If you're not doing, please, you're failing. You're failing and doing injustice to yourself. The amount of conversation, the amount of diverse conversation happens on the workplace. You need to be equipped with things beyond your textbooks. Communication is a very, very powerful tool. And many of you, actually, we all struggle, especially when you come from a non-English speaking state. So I was, uh, happens to be a part of the, um, you know, AACSB, which is a credit, it is a, so it's basically a rating organization for business schools. And we had a discussions that how the MBA 4.0 should be aligned to industry 4.0. Now we're talking on 5.0 already. So how the fast the world is changing, you can imagine. Now, what is the industry 4.0? Has to be aligned to MBA 4.0. So we talked about four things about industry 4.0 which every MBA should be learning. The first is knowledge of analytics, analytical tools is very, very critical. Irrespective of whether you are taking any, any specialization, knowledge of analytics and analytical tools, is a, it's a table state now. The second point was digital literacy in marketing, marketing digital literacy. So irrespective of whether you've chosen HR or finance or legal or any of the fields, you need to be a mar mar digital marketing literate, each one of us. And you also say financial literate, financial digital literacy. Now we're talking about digital marketing literacy. That's a must. And the fourth piece is sustainability, right? What do you understand by ESG, sustainability, triple bottom line? Those are the questions. And the last one is empathy. But are you empathic? Are you having empathy for, for your community, for your people, for your society? Who will tell us, who will tell me in this room the difference between 
empathy and sympathy. Sunil ji. So make it interacting. I mean, if you have, if you find any difference, I mean, okay, so respond. So, empathy means that you have to keep your position like I am also thinking of that, I am thinking of that, empathy means that if I am in that position, then what do I do? And what do I think? Sorry, I don't think of that. Sorry, I don't think of that. Sir, uh, sympathy is when we only listen to someone's problem, but empathy is when we try to solve their problem and we involve ourselves uh, in solving their problem. Okay. So take this example. <clears throat> Both of you take this example that you are a manager and you have been asked to remove two people from your team and you have no choice. You cannot like go back and say that, you know, I can't remove. How will you react in sympathy and how will you react in empathy? Can you differentiate and tell the class? Come on, people at the back. What you will do? So you have a situation. So those who are aspiring to become HR professionals, I mean, just think, just brainstorm and try to come up with you know, some, some interesting ways of you know, doing that. Because he has said there is no choice. You'll have to do it. So if I need to uh, think like, uh, like if I have uh, having an empathy, I, I would think that what would I do uh, if I will at that position, 
and but but if I have some sympathy, I will not fire him. That's the basic difference. I need to. Hello, sir. So, if, if you can recommend uh, him or her to other company or something, and in sympathy, we can feel only sorry for her and make make them understand that we have to do or something like that. But in empathy, we can recommend to some other company or where so we can do something for them. Mm -hmm. Very good. <coughs> Any other, any other thought? Any other, give it a try. Just think, just brainstorm. Sir, uh, if we think empathetically, then uh, uh, I should uh, uh, recommend him or her to uh, evolve uh, something uh, to need uplift their skills and all that. And uh, if uh, sympathetically, then I will just uh, consider. <coughs> Yes, some of the very good points um, which you all brought, right? See, when you look at your family, right? When there's something happens with our siblings or near dear family members, most of our responses are very sympathetically, right? Um, we start crying, being more emotional, feeling bad about, oh, I have to fire this person, you know? And probably you will not start feeling good about it or you're not. But when you are empathetic about this, you know, you understand this is the need of the business. You, you get to it. You try to give feedback to the other person and say that, hey, this is what we need. We have three more months for, for you to give a notice period. Don't worry, you have three months, you'll find a job. You know, work on these things. Strengthen, I will also help you. So empathy is, you know, like this. But in a normal situation, if a manager is asked and you know, how can I fire, you know, just now he had a family, you know, suffering, there were some situational issues. You'll bring all the emotional issues, right? But the decision is made and you have to just follow this decision. Because this decision would not have happened all of a sudden because there we must have, uh, you know, a complete, you know, a couple of months, or at least six months, four months of scrutiny or company not doing well. So people would have been aware something will like this will happen. So most of these things doesn't happen all of a sudden, right? There is a lot of um, background to it. So preparing that for, for them, making them, you know, understanding of this issue, giving them right feedback, asking them to work on this area, sometimes mentor them, guide them, rather than, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, oh, you lost a job, can I give you like some money if you don't have, those kind of things, it's a, it's a very, very, so there's no room for sympathy in corporate life. That's why we always call empathy, right? Because when you think for sympathy, you think more from heart and you make wrong judgment, make wrong choices. Let's, let's move to uh, more ideas, right? So I think we are very scared about failures. Very, see, uh, you know, what people will say, like I've asked this question only Few of you open in 150 students, right? Why? Because, you know, if I say something, what this guy will think, the presenter will think, speaker will think, what the teachers will think. I think we have too much of these notions, you know, preconceived notions, what we say that, you know, why? I think that, you know, we all have to break. Because more and more you inquisitive about things, more and more you ask questions, more and more you're open for failures, more and more you will succeed. Think about any sports. Think about anything. How did you start learning walking? How did you start learning running? Without any failures, without any falling down, without any, no. You, how the entrepreneur, do you think all the entrepreneurs in first strike, they make it gold? No. So, 
open for failures learning from failures not repeating the same mistake making those changes in your style of functioning is another asking questions asking being inquisitive and the last this year i would say dream and dream big see many times our mind actually works the way that you signal the mind right you you can notice this you will if you think about it you will un, you will understand how the psyche of mind works if you give the mind a fear that hey i am very tense the whole body will react like that if you sometimes you know you say that right especially for interview preparation fake it till you make it right fake it till you make it so even if you are the most nervous during an interview even if you are you know really really shaky if you 10 times you fake it to the mind no oh, i am confident i am confident i'll do it this is this is my day this is the day after 10 15 attempts your mind will start reading and you will not be shaking or you not be nervous so mind cannot differentiate between fake and you know if you if you can do this act many times we able to succeed so dreaming big is a giving signal to your mind that you are readying yourself for that achievement and that is something registered in your mind and you will strive for it the mind will remind you so when you say don't dream you know don't do day dreaming it tumse nahi ho payega all those things it's a crap think big when you think big then only you'll achieve half of it or full of it right but if your yardstick if your you know goal post is still much lower so that's that's what i will advise all of you that uh, see these are not theories these are not some gyan this is i am telling from a practical experience when i was in patna i was dreaming to get a bank clerk or a bank po or a, you know probably some government job because that's the ecosystem i was growing up in and probably that's the happiest moment my family i would have been he would have cracked one of those exams and would have become a government servant i didn't have the avenue to think dream big that i can be sitting in mnc and start and work like this so many time this is this is a this is a harsh reality each one of us can kind of go through it if you are not at this point thing oh i am not serene i am and you know i will not be it's all is a crap again if you think that you know tomorrow in next two years you will scale up you can compete to or i am you can compete to anybody for matter right today's knowledge is not held by one person or one institute or one individual i have moved to sustainability for marketing without any degree without doing any course it was a self learning right so so it's all you are empowered with so much of knowledge on online that you can learn anything and everything on your own nowadays with little bit of help from from teachers and faculties so dream big and start dreaming big now if you don't do it you are doing a lot of dishonesty to yourself one thing you realize when your corporate life right um you you slog yourself you know you work very hard but having a balance in life is also very important you need to understand this from beginning and as i just said right set your expectations clearly if you set your expectations clearly i think you'll have all the right mix of having a balance a quality life a quality family quality social physical everything physical wellness mental wellness all of those this is also a important aspect of our life so this is what i had to share today um, to all of you i just thought might be some of these thoughts will be useful um, and probably you can take some inputs advices uh from a practical experiences what i have undergo of last 17 years in corporate life and um, 
I'm ready to take more questions so that you know it's become a little interactive and I also it make me a little more awake. So if you have any questions, you may please go ahead. The more you ask, the more you learn. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, sir, what are the strategies, strategies to handle peer pressure? Sir, can you give some? So the first thing I think um, you should not think peer as a competition. In fact, a uh, few days back, I was talking to someone and he started with a, is a, col is a, is a colleague of mine. And he start comparing that uska itna hai, mera itna nahi hai. Wo paanch saal mein yaha pahuncha, mein dhas saal mein bhi nahi pahuncha, right? I think that comparison we have to stop. Peer is not a competitor. Your competition should be from yourself, not from anybody else. Like how much I have excelled in in these areas, right? How much I have moved from from um, you know, from execution management to more strategy understanding, how much learning I have, how many hours of learning I will do. So I think the goal is not to look at the next person sitting next to you or working next to you. Look at yourself, how much you are making you, you know, better, right? Sometimes the, the you know, um, your outcomes or impact or the benefits will take some time, right? Not everything is like, it's not a computer program, HR function or, you know, the human function. It, it takes different for different people. But you should compete only and only with you. More you compete with your peers and friends and, and next door, next person, you will, you will not be actually moving upwards, but actually will go down. Because in your mind, you always want to go one up, one up from the other person. No. That's a thought we should not be doing it, right? And many times, so this will give you a short-term satisfaction and happiness, right? Okay, oh, chalo, isse acha marks mila gaya, right? Or isse acha salary mujhe mil gaya. That is, is that the end? Is that the end goal you're looking at? No, you need to improve every, every now and then in terms of your knowledge, in terms of your communication, your interpersonal skill, your, you know, aptitude to move from execution to management and management to, you know, uh, strategy, entrepreneurial, right? I think there's a world is so much to, to offer you, right? There's no dearth of um, opportunities, right? And more and more you focus on the other person because more you focus to the peer, the focus will be not on yourself, but on your peer. So keep the focus, the spotlight on you not on anyone else. Any other question? Sir, work and life both are important, but can you guide how to balance that? See, you're having a routine is you yeah, have okay. So having a routine is very important, right? Um, let's say if you let your manager or your supervisor or your professors or whoever is the stakeholder know that this is my time. Like I will not take any call between seven to eight or six to seven in the morning. This is my time to do my sports, yoga, or whatever you like to do, right? I think everybody appreciates that. Everybody 
understand that okay you have a personal life so the fact is that until unless you call it out that this is my time and if you are ready to take calls uh, like i have a very good habit or a bad habit that whenever i sleep i switch off my phone because i have a landline so if there's an email in my family members have that so if there's any emergency they can always call me landline but i have a habit that i will not you know i never sleep without switching off the phone right good or bad i don't know but this is a practice i am following for last 15 years right which which makes my sleep totally you know disturb free otherwise people can call any time right so having such like you know nobody can my manager or my boss will not say that why do you switch up because that's what i i i do i don't get sleep without that so people will appreciate when you respect yourself more whatever your priorities in life i have refused some of the jobs um so i was interviewed by a large company and in marketing role and i asked my manager that how is the work life balance she said it's a great you know very good everybody says good while in the conversation uh she told me that you know this is the blackberry days which is i'm talking about 14 years back 13 years back the first thing when i get up in the night i check my blackberry and check my mails basically and uh, if you are hiring manager or the person you are going to report to if she tells you that at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the night the first thing she does is checking her phone and replying to mail obviously you she will expect you to also to do that right so obviously this company does not have that work life balance so i refused to join the job despite it was better paid better brand etc but i i wanted a better work life balance so dividing the work having some personal time you, you know we have a calendar system in the company so we block our calendar so let's say i every morning i go to play badminton so i will block my calendar from 7 to 8:30 whoever it is whether it's my boss or ceo until and unless a fire fighting situation where the the earth will fall apart i will not attend or accept any call right so you have to have that you know um, you have determination that this is my time i will not compromise after 8:30 you wake me up till 12 o'clock in the night i'm okay to take a call but till 8:30 in the morning i'm not available so 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 those kind of form formness you have to show to your um, you know stakeholder and that's how we were able to kind of make this and everybody respect when you start respecting yourself any other questions good evening sir good evening um, so i'm talking about ease of doing business uh, in 2007 india rank was 100 in 2015 uh, it was 77 and in 2018 it improved to uh, 63 uh, so my question is uh, what are the reasons they are the constant uh, improvement uh, uh, in the ease of doing business in the uh, ranking for india and what else uh, and what more we can do to improvise it more and more so that some day we could stand at number 1 see i am not a very competent on this subject but i will give you my perspective right um see if we look at from the global standing right i think there are two areas where india always lacks in a big time one is our judiciary system right i think uh, the corruption and judiciary system um is is where you know we have not made much progress right now the the way the, the, the systems of approvals the licenses etc right that is still very cumbersome and we we without consultant without people i think it's not very um, you know uh, straight forward and you know and until this with the governments and then the whole ecosystem make those changes it will not happen the second is the judicial system getting a um, you know some kind of until unless you are a big corporate and you have a big machinery to kind of operate on it i think many times we have these challenges coming up where you know judiciary is not so fast because there are so many cases etc right so this definitely you know gives a low i mean 
people scare about because there's a huge risk they operate with, right? If something goes wrong, they have to really fight it down. It can create a lot of issues, right? Uh, also, I think if you leave this apart, which is not in control with the private body, because there's something the government has to do. I think the, the biggest challenge in India is also about, you know, the geopolitical risk, what we see, the attrition, the high attrition. I think, you know, if you look at, um, you know, if you must have read about the great, uh, you know, um, the, the great, um, what is that? Um, mm, attrition, the great attrition, you know, what we are talking about, the companies are facing huge challenges with employee salary, you know, India's salary is improving. Uh, in a way, it's a good, but you know, if you look at the global player, especially in IT services and other companies, um, you will find that that's a big challenge because you have competitions coming from other countries. So most of the time, the ease of business is compared to the legal infrastructure issues, um, you know, then also about your corruption and how how that, you know, your, your, your less risk country. I think those are the issues, I think, still a long way for com- countries like India to go. But there are a lot of brighter side without, you know, much of, without much of, you know, anything of this sort, so getting sorted, but the new age ecosystem of the startup, et cetera, developing the kind of talent pool we have you know, if you look at even in the global markets, most of the technology heads uh, are now Indian origin, whether the CEO of large large IT companies or CEO of some of the large, uh, you know, banks, you know, see, especially in the technology side, you see a lot of Indians are heading. So I think that's just given us a lot of push. But yeah, I mean, until unless we solve infrastructure, judiciary, corruption issues and all of those, I think you'll not make much of, uh, you know, improvement here. Have any other question? <coughs> any other question? So I think we are uh, we are done. Thank you very much, Abhishek. Thank you, sir. For, uh, for such a wonderful uh, uh, lecture on. How to you know the transition? So you have made you know students in a way understand that what should be the transition from campus to a corporate life, and I'm sure that they will try to inculcate those habits which have been highlighted by you, so that they can have a better transition. And with those words, thank you very much. And we'll in future also we'll we'll kind you of, we'll we'll request you to spare some time for this college and for the state. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.